Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd like to start as well by echoing Chambers' thanks to Joanne Lamont for this really important debate. I'm very grateful for the opportunity. I, I love the fact that the gimmick for Down Syndrome Awareness Week is to wear odd socks. It turns out, Deputy Presiding Officer, that I've actually been marking uh, Down Syndrome Awareness Week every single day of the year. Um, but we have to recognise the importance of events like this and helping, as the, the wider narrative around this week goes, to help society see past Down syndrome. And while I will come on to the, the, this year's theme of employment, I just want to stay for a moment on that idea of getting society to see past Down syndrome. Because in each case of every one of my friends or co-workers or people I'm acquainted with who have Down syndrome, I have always seen such industry, such creativity, compassion, a, capa a capacity for romance and great humour, so that we should all, in weeks like this, remember that those people who live among us, our neighbours, our friends, with Downs, just represent a different kind of normal. But society is rigged differently, and it doesn't recognise that different kind of normal. And I think that's why we're here today to challenge that. And from conception, the odds can be stacked against people with Down syndrome. And I will stray into a slightly sensitive area here. Now, I don't want for a minute to challenge a parent's decision not to proceed with a pregnancy when Downs is detected. That should always be their right. But that should not be the default assumption of medical staff who are offering them advice at that time. We need to un equip our medical staff with an understanding and uh, a, a way of speaking to parents when at that difficult time of decision making to scotch the idea that Downs is somehow a life sentence. And I'm very much grateful to my constituent, Lynn Murray, who's done a lot of research and work to work with the medical profession to, to manage that conversation. It's about challenging stigma ev at every single form of life for someone with Downs. And assumptions that, um, that we all, at some point through popular culture, have paid into. And it's right that this year's theme should be inclusion in employment, because in terms of independent living, which is, I think, the aspiration of every family with somebody affected by Down syndrome, then employment is the absolute central pillar to their ability to live independently. With employment, you can have a social network, feelings of self-worth, feelings of fulfillment, and financial independence. There's, there are very few other tenants of society that we all aspire to, but that, that is absolutely one of them. And I think, as an MSP for a constituency in our nation's capital, I'm very proud of the many businesses and social enterprises which have actually gone out of their way to recruit not just people with Down syndrome, but other learning difficulties as well. Just up the hill, I for many years worked alongside people in the engine shed, which is a great social was a great social enterprise, uh, working with particularly with people with Down syndrome. So we know that with any learning difficulties in our society, we have a parlous postcode lottery attached to support, that sometimes um, we don't get the support that families need to, to help their children who have Downs through the transitions that we've heard about today and into employment, which is obviously this year's uh, theme. So I want to thank Joanne again for today's debate. It's absolutely vital, and we don't just mark Down syndrome once a year through the Down Syndrome Awareness Week, but keep it in our minds in everything that we do in our chamber. Because as I said at the top of my remarks, being living with Downs, having Downs is just a different kind of normal. Thank you.